very good evening and welcome to a brand new episode of Free Wheeling. I am Siddharth Vinayak Patankar and uh, as promised, I have with me someone who has uh, been considered in many ways to be quite the veteran of the Indian automobile industry, years of experience behind him, understands the market very well and is now forging a new direction at uh, Hyundai Motor India. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome onto the show Mr. Tarun Garg. It's great to see you, Tarun. Good evening. Thank you, Siddharth. It's always a pleasure to see you. And good evening, everybody. It's, uh, no, the pleasure is all mine. I can promise you it's, uh, you know, very nice that you have uh, spared the time today to uh, to join the show. Uh, I know it's been a little crazy the last few, uh, you know, I, I would say weeks and months have, uh, sorry, weeks and days have been uh, extremely challenging. So, um, you know, it's it's good that we finally found the time, I think, to coordinate our calendars together. It's great having you on the show. Thank you. Same here. All right. Yes. So we'll jump straight into it. The, the time itself. I mean, you know, obviously it's, it's a time that uh, challenges all of us, the best and the worst. Um, at Hyundai, we've seen, of course, a lot of action in terms of uh, some of the measures that you've been taking. And, you know, there's a lot of news about um, some of the uh, uh, initiatives as well. But, uh, you know, when it all comes down to it, everybody wants to get back to the, the real business of cars. So now that we're looking at a situation where there's going to be a partial lift, at least of the lockdown, if not an entire lift, and that too, just in a matter of days, uh, what's, what's happening inside the company right now? Yeah, I think that's very relevant. And frankly speaking, last three, four weeks, you know, we were all preparing, 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 okay, scenarios. And I believe now the time has come to really implement, to go to, go to the market. And uh, I think this is what we are, we are all looking forward to. You're right. We understand that probably it's not like to be uh, the whole India is going to open. So we, we are ready for that, which means that we have to go much more local. I think the challenges increase uh, both in terms of communication, in terms of really changing plans uh, very quickly, uh, the media plans. Uh, so everything changes. And especially for Hyundai, because uh, as you know, uh, we had launched some very exciting new models. So, uh, so actually, but at the same time, I think I, what I can tell you is that we are really looking forward to a much more positive start than some of the experts are predicting. Well, that's heartening to know. I mean, I think uh, that's the part that we're all sort of wanting to know from you that, uh, you know, firstly, what is that start going to be in your opinion? Uh, and secondly, uh, you know, of course, we'll talk about the products because there's, there's actually a lot that's been happening at your end. And, you know, uh, it's almost sort of hit a speed breaker when, when all of this happened because you were just gaining momentum at the auto expo time. So, um, so yeah, how, how soon do you think things will start to at least open up slightly, uh, you know, some sales, some amount of excitement beginning again? Yes, uh, uh, the good thing is I think there is some kind of a clarity emerging that yes, these are the red zones, these are the orange zones, these are the green zones. Of course, we would know tomorrow, hopefully, that uh, what it means, uh, how many places can open. But we at Hyundai are ready. Okay, these are the workshops, these are the dealers who are ready. We are ready with our sanitization. We understand that customer expectations are going to be very different from what they were in the pre-COVID era. Uh, in fact, to give a head start, we have already dispatched uh, you know, the masks and sanitizers to all our dealerships across the country so that, you know, our customers, our dealer employees who are, of course, very, very important for us, all of them feel very, very comfortable. Uh, during these four weeks, we have had a very good connect with the customers, both in terms of social messaging uh, or our new initiatives like click to buy And we, uh, in fact, our dealer executives have been talk to, talking to them. And the thing is that many of these customers have said, that yes, they are looking forward to this opening of this lockdown and they're ready to take deliveries of vehicles. So uh, I, I think uh, we are ready and uh, we are just hoping and wishing that tomorrow we get some very good news and then we get uh, the ball rolling. Okay. That, that's very encouraging, I mean, to, to know that uh, things are more or less sort of ready to get back to uh, whatever the new normal is. Uh, but tell me, uh, from your dealer community, uh, regardless of what part of the country they're in and, you know, what the state of lockdown or opening up might be, um, what is the kind of buzz that you're getting? Is it overall still looking like a scenario of doom and gloom or are they also just as charged up? They're also sort of excited to get going again. 
Yeah. Uh, frankly speaking, I have seen the, uh, a, a change happening over these 40 days. The first few days, you know, when I was talking to dealers, it was still kind of disbelief. Okay, maybe it is announced for 17 days, 18 days, 21 days, but maybe it will be earlier. Maybe it, it can't happen, you know. Then the acceptance came in. And uh, frankly speaking, last seven days, I can clearly see that a lot of positivity coming in. Of course, uh, we at Hyundai have always uh, also taken a big initiative, as you would know, that we have really come forward and supported the dealers in these times. I yeah. think this was very, very important. And we understand that their cash flows are under a lot of pressure. And uh, of course, they have to give salaries to their employees. And, uh, and, and immediately the income has completely stopped. So I think uh, that we understand that 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 uh, aspect of it. So uh, last four five days, in fact, dealers have been applying to the local authorities for opening the workshops or the showrooms, and I think the response in the green zones is has started coming in. So uh, in fact, today I, I saw many photographs, sanitization of the workshops, sanitization of the showrooms as well. So I think we are all set. Uh, we are all set. Uh, the good thing is because Hyundai had uh, had uh, shifted to BS6. So the, uh, the, we also have a reasonably good number of stocks at the dealerships. The new Greta had just been launched, which means that uh, there are a lot of bookings uh, already there and the vehicles are there at the dealership. So I think the ball can be set rolling with the, with the deliveries kicking in immediately. So, uh, right. uh, so we are ready. Okay, uh, new Greta, I mean, you've gone there and of course I was always going to go there. Uh, yes, timing could have been a lot better and nobody could have planned this, of course. but. Uh, tell us what you have in that initial burst that happened, you know, Auto Expo, you showed the car, then subsequently a few weeks later you had the actual launch, the market launch, um, you know, and of course we had a very unusual launch with social distancing being practiced, I remember. Uh, so given all of that, uh, you know, the car hasn't really, it's not really out of the gate yet in the sense, sure, I'm sure you've got a lot of buzz, but uh, in terms of the actual sales, the actual interest, uh, we haven't yet really seen that happen. So what is your expectation now? Not just because it's the new Creta, which is of course going to be huge anyway, but also because of the situation and the fact that people might sort of take a little time to warm up to the opening up anyway. Yes, uh, I think you're right. Uh, the warming up was happening and in fact, we had received close to 20,000 bookings. In fact, uh, when the lockdown happened, we had received about 18,000 bookings. You know, the good thing is, even during the lockdown, the kind of buzz Creta is still getting, the kind of inquiries and the book all we have been getting, is amazing. In fact, uh, I am I am happy to admit that out of the total bookings being received during the lockdown, 75% of them have been Creta. So we are really getting some very good traction. Uh, the deliveries had just started before the lockdown, and uh, like I told you, uh, uh, I have no reason to believe that uh, uh, that uh, there is anything to worry about, even be, even because of the corona and customer interest remains. And some of the, uh, you know, the uh, good friends like you, I think, who drove the Creta uh, before, just before the lockdown happened. I think the reviews have come in last week. Uh, they are fabulous. And uh, uh, in fact, we are getting some very good uh, uh, customer feedback also on those reviews. And they are really yearning to really go and test drive the vehicle and then take the delivery. So uh, we are we are ready to we are ready to jet set go. Your, your comms team must be cringing right now because I'm one of those who hasn't <laughs> driven the car yet. <laughs> and oh, I've been giving okay. them a lot of grief about it. So, you know, <laughs> I'm dying to drive it. I haven't, I haven't had my chance yet because the car was supposed to come to us, I think, two days before the lockdown got announced. And then, you know, everybody just figured it doesn't make sense. So, we'll wait. And, uh, you know, rather than hurry up and do some, uh, you know, short, compromised kind of review like we have seen, uh, I think it's better to just wait and do this the right way because it's the Creta, you know, it's 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 a giant model of the uh, of the market. So we will do it when when we can and we'll do it well. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> but I'm dying to drive it. That much you can, you know. I can assure you, you are going to have one hell of an experience. I think the feedback I have got from the few friends has been very very good, and it is really really very very fun to drive. And I'm sure you're, it's going to meet even Siddharth Vinayak Patanka's high expectations. I can't wait. I, I, and you know what? While you were talking, we were looking at the images of the Creta because we did manage to shoot the car a little bit, of course, uh, before the lockdown happened. And uh, yeah, the car just, you know, it, it got so much reaction. And in fact, lots of people, by the way, are joining in. There are a lot of people who are live right now with us. So welcome to all of you uh, from both of us. And uh, many of them are saying hello to you as well, Tarun. Hello, everybody. Very nice to, to have this opportunity. Thanks to Siddharth to, to be able to talk to you. 
Okay, so the first question on the Creta, I might as well ask you straight away. Pritam wants to know what is your expectation then from the Creta in the post-COVID era? So uh, I think expectation is there. Creta has been a market leader. Uh, the, uh, it has been a cult brand and we sold close to, I believe, 470,000 Creta since its launch. I think this yeah. timing was right to give it a, a complete makeover. And this is what we have done. And uh, so, uh, like I told you, we have received 20,000 bookings already. And the good part is that even diesel BS6, in fact, there was a lot of talk about diesel. And I'm very happy to inform that 55% of the bookings for Creta are for diesel. So that I think is amazing. Uh, that's the first part of it. The second part of it is the turbo petrol also has received a great traction. So about 12% of the 45% petrol is, is turbo. So I think uh, the response is very good. And uh, I don't see any reason why we should not get back the cult leadership which Creta has always enjoyed. Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, you know, the, the, the part about what you mentioned, the diesel bookings being nice and robust, that's actually very heartening because, you know, I think in all of this uh, you know, anti-diesel wave of sorts that happened, people forgot the fact that you can actually have clean diesel. Uh, and, you know, still have that extra torque and that absolute fun to drive element because um, I, I've shamelessly always said I'm an absolute diesel fan. So uh, it gives me, uh, you know, a lot of happiness to know that people are supporting this BS6 move to BS6 diesel. Uh, despite the fact that, you know, I think a lot of those bookings came in, I think, even before you announced prices. So, you know, people knew that it's BS6, it's likely to be more expensive and yet, you know, they were going for it. So uh, I love that. <laughs> I think that's a very important point you made. And let me tell you, this, this distraction of for diesel, I think, frankly, we are also very, very pleasantly surprised. Of course, we had always planned for BS6 diesel. We knew that the price, which probably the industry estimate was of a much higher price increase, we were able to really bring it at a very, very competitive price. But even then, uh, not only Creta, but the venue or uh, everywhere, the diesel traction, diesel traction is extremely, extremely good. Okay, so there's a question that I had planned to ask you much later, but uh, Sudesh has asked it already, so I will ask it to you as well. And uh, that is that uh, whole point about uh, the new i20. I mean, this is the new generation. It was supposed to debut, of course, at the uh, Geneva Motor Show. Then the Geneva Motor Show got cancelled. This is the global debut. Uh, so the pictures were released. I know that there's been a lot of anticipation, a lot of talk. And, uh, you know, it's a hugely important model for India. Yes, it is. And uh, i20 again has been a very, very cult brand for us. And I think the way it has consistently raised the bar, uh, the customer feedback has been extremely, extremely good. I, uh, I can really share some of the some of the experiences that I keep on reading. Uh, you know, uh, frankly speaking, as far as uh, when it is to going to be launched, I, 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 I will still keep it under wraps. But I can only tell you, and uh, the, the reviews about the design, the reviews about uh, you know the, the, the feeling which the customers are getting, I think we are very excited. And as we all know that Hyundai customers always have very high expectations. Uh, last 15 months have seen us launch seven models, uh, which means every two months a model. So uh, I'm sure i20 as well is going to meet customers' expectations. In fact, exceed customer expectations and take the legacy forward. Uh, and I am personally very, very excited about the product. So friend, uh, Sudesh, I think just look forward to it. I can only tell you it's going to be worth the wait. Well, while we are speaking, we can see a video of the car playing out that we've got uh, from uh, your colleagues in Europe. They have released uh, some video and yeah, the car looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, in terms of shape, size, you know, it's the i20 and yet it's got all these great new lighting elements and a big grill. It looks really interesting. And again, another car I can't wait to drive. Yes, yes, yes. And it will be worth the wait, like I said. You know, and the last i20 too, I think in all of our shootouts in that segment, uh, even I, I'm sure much to your dismay at your previous employer, <laughs> we used to always have the i20 beating the Beleno in all our shootouts. So, you know, <laughs> for us, it's been it's been the benchmark car in that space. There's no doubt in terms of its drivability, in terms of looks. So can't wait for the new one, really. Yes, I think Hyundai has always believed in raising the bar. And, and this is, I think, a very important point you see about every car. Yeah. I mean, when we talked about the venue also, less than four meter SUV space, frankly speaking, I think the bar was clearly raised, whether it was the Blue Link and, uh, you know, whether it was the Turbo uh, again and the kind of response Turbo received. I mean, just imagine 75% of the petrol customers opted for the Turbo in venue. So I think it's all about raising the bar. Now the voice enabled sunroof in the Creta 
which is again making waves. So I20 again, please wait for some exciting features, and uh, it's going to be, uh, like I said, uh, something to something to see. Tell me this, though, Tarun. I mean, the I20 is an, an interesting segment because you know, on the one hand, we call it also, of course, the premium hatchback space. So it is the premium sort of uh, play for for that you know that buyer. And yet, having said that, it has to be competitively priced, and it's got to be uh, you know a certain kind of footprint. And yet loaded with features so it's a sort of a difficult package to put together i know from from your perspective having said that you mentioned all these great features that have now come in you know things like uh, especially the internet connectivity you know the, the fact that you have the embedded sim uh, the fact that you have uh, so much that's possible through the app now and also let's not forget like you said you know some of these other features that people like you know the sunroof and things like that uh, given the fact that the i20 has always been the segment benchmark is it safe to assume it will be a connected car of course, yes. You, you, uh, we have already announced uh, that Hyundai is going to take a leap uh, in terms of connectivity, and uh, 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 and uh, frankly speaking, we feel that today's customer he wants to be connected, and uh, and the level of connectivity also continues to go up because if you see the Creta now, I think we have taken the Blue Link also uh, a level up. I mean, just see the kind of features. So uh, we always believed in that uh, uh, the new Verna, the Creta. The Tucson we showcased at the Auto Expo, and of course, then the i20. I think it is going to carry the legacy forward with Hyundai setting new benchmarks. I uh, can't wait, of course. And uh, the Tucson uh, as well, I know you showed it at the uh, Auto Expo, uh, like you said. So what's the uh, expectation on that in terms of uh, hitting the market? And again, for you, from a, from a segment perspective, you know, we always felt like the Tucson could do much more than it has done in the past. Uh, do you think now the market's kind of going to be ready for that? Look, uh, I would not really like to say much in the last for the, uh, what happened last one month, but uh, okay, let's leave that last one month of Corona out of the of picture. Course. And what I would say is that, frankly speaking, we at Hyundai believe that there's always a time for a company to really enter a segment in a very positive way. And as far as Hyundai is concerned, uh, we personally thought that yes, this was the time when we had really taken a leap in terms of technology, where in terms of brand leadership. In terms of, if you see the last year's numbers, whether it was in terms of customer satisfaction, sales, service, whether it was in terms of market share, uh, calendar year 19, Hyundai's market share was the best we had in the last 10 years. So uh, uh, we thought that the customer uh, had evolved and now the customer was ready to accept premium products from Hyundai. And that is where I think Tucson came in. And uh, I firmly believe uh, we had just, of course, showcased it in the Auto Expo, uh, the, uh, the reviews we have got. And uh, as and when we are ready to launch it this year, uh, I think, yes, this segment, I would not say that it, it is for volume, but I think for the discerning customer who feels that, yes, he wants to really move up, whether it is the 470,000 Creta customers, which we already have, or, uh, you know, so many others in the market, uh, I think uh, uh, time has come to really give them a product, which is, which is not only powerful to drive, but very good to look at, spacious, and in terms of technology, it takes them to the next level. Now, you know, there are lots of questions that come out of this, of course, and it's the logical sort of uh, path to take. But uh, given what we do on the show, we just kind of go all in different directions because, you know, there are so many questions that have come, some which I have missed, so I've been scrolling up to look at it. Uh, when we were talking about the i20 and, you know, showing those visuals, a lot of people have asked if there will be an N version, like a performance version of the car. Now. Before you answer that, I, I know that firstly, not going to confirm anything at this point, but uh, you know, this whole thing of having, maybe it doesn't have to be the, you know, the, the absolute top end of that performance spectrum like you have in, let's say, Europe or, or the US, but the fact that you could have one slightly sportier, edgier version, uh, Badget N, of course, and you know, introduce like a new concept to the market with this new generation. I'm sure the marketer in you likes that idea. Yeah, yeah, it's very exciting and I believe very strongly that it gives you, it gives a lot to your brand. Like I said, uh, you know, uh, everything is not only volume. I think we as marketers are always very, very interested in increasing the brand equity and uh, uh, and the end brand has received a very, very good response, uh, you know. Uh, so, uh, like I said, look, we are, we, can, we, have, we have a lot of options. Hyundai being a global company, I think there are a lot of products. There is this, of course, the end line, and there are, there are, uh, I mean, Palisades, and, you know, I keep on, in fact, all of you give me so much of information, uh, much more than sometimes, which I see in my product planning meeting. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, 
uh, what I can only say is that yes, being a global player has its own advantages. At the same time, we also have to keep on assessing the customer demand. We have to see, you know, because there are always these issues about okay, whether to produce here, whether to import, uh, what is the right time, what is, you know, what. So I think uh, you you should have faith and trust, and uh, at the right time, you will you will uh, you will hear from us. And uh, and I guess I strongly believe that uh, anything like this really gives a lot to your brand and uh, and give and, and gets you some very new exciting customers who again are adding so much to your brand. Okay, now uh, of course the other topic is something that you just mentioned, which is the other set of questions that we are getting, uh, which would have been the logical next step from the talk about premium, how the customer is ready, and you know you spoke about the Tucson. Um, you know, I think ever since last year. Uh, many of us have have spoken to your MD as well about this uh, and said that look, we strongly believe. And I'll uh, let me just speak for myself. I strongly believe that you know there was a time maybe the Santa Fe the market wasn't ready for it, um, and so people you know might say that oh it didn't do well or whatever. Never mind all of that. Instead of bringing us the next generation Santa Fe, you know just bring us the next gen the, the the new generation Palisade. Uh, I'm sure you've heard this and we've talked about it too. So you know let's talk a little bit about the Palisade again, not in the context of when are you launching it. Because that's unfair, I know. But a car like that, you know, look at what it's done for Hyundai as a brand. It's just kind of lifted Hyundai to a new level, even in the US market. Markets in, in Europe which don't have it still are clamoring for it. They're almost begging you to launch it there. And we get that sort of feedback from our viewers here too, because we, we just put up a story about maybe three weeks ago, um, you know, a video as well as a text story, and, and it's gone through the roof. I mean, everybody wants to see that car coming in. So when you see that kind of, you know, buzz. I'm not going to call it anything more than that. What's your reaction? Okay, let me wear the hat of a customer here. You know, I uh, I joined in December 19 and February I went to Korea. And uh, first time, this was my first time to Korea and Palisade was the car which was, which was kind of with me for four days. And I felt in love with the car. So I can tell you, yes, as a customer, I can fully understand the feelings of all the fans, of all the Hyundai fans, and the kind of response Palisade has uh, got in Korea, in US. Uh, yes, we are we are very excited. We are very much excited at Hyundai. And uh, again, uh, I'm sorry the answer may look, uh, this, uh, look may look similar. Like I said, we have a lot of options, and I'm not uh, uh, I'm not saying it, okay, this is this is right, this is wrong. But yes, I firmly believe that in going forward, Indian customer, uh, uh, you know, is evolving. And many of them, I, I think the, the segment keeps on increasing. And going forward, I think uh, there would be an opportunity to, to launch products in that segment as well. Again, the same thing, whether to import, whether to produce locally, uh, the, at what price can you do? I mean, I think those are the issues which, which we have to really iron out and yeah. then see, okay, this is the right time and then go ahead and do it. Yeah, and you're right, because the environment right now, even from a policy perspective, you know, you have this 2500 import rule, you have um, the fact that you can create a new segment with the Palisade, because, you know, there isn't really a rival car for that in the market today, if you look at it. Uh, I mean, the argument is always made about maybe Kia launching the Telluride, so, you know, you both are in that segment. But uh, jokes apart, I think, uh, honestly, you know, for, for all my understanding of the way things work in this market, uh, yeah, I think you have a tremendous case for the Palisade to come. So. You know, guys, uh, those of you who agree with me, please, you know, give me a thumbs up or give me something here so I can <laughs> I can pass that on to Tarun. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. And Ali said, I felt like a king when I when I stepped into the yeah. car. This was my feedback to the guy, you know, the the, the, the colleague who had come to pick me up. I'm feeling like a king, you know, the, the way I'm entering the car. I mean, that's the feeling I got. We're looking at the, at the visuals of the Palisade right now on the screen. Uh, it's just such an imposing looking vehicle. It also carries forward the new design language uh, quite uh, beautifully. Uh, and you know, it kind of fits in really well as the big brother of the venue, the Creta, the Tucson. Uh, you know, it has that, that new look completely down. So yeah, it'll be great to see it here on Indian roads. And I know it may not happen right away, but certainly uh, great to have that consideration at least, you know, happening at Hyundai India. Uh, that's good to know. Now, of course, product, 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 there's so many to talk about. But let's just take one step back, just before the Auto Expo and then, you know, before all of this crazy crisis that we are in right now happened, uh, you also launched the Aura into the market. So uh, what is your initial sort of feedback from the market, the dealers, the initial customers as well? And the reason, of course, this question always gets asked about the subcompact sedan is, uh, you know, it's always that, that one space where you have the mighty desire. So 
to try and take it, uh, you know, to try and get some sort of a share against that is always a big challenge. So what's your impression about the aura and how much further do you think that car needs to go? Yeah, uh, look, uh, uh, as, uh, as an OEM who, which, has, uh, which has a range of vehicles, I think it's always a challenge. We also want, we want to really capitalize on any opportunity that exists in the market. Now, when we were launching this Aura and, you know, some so many journalists, they asked, journalist friends, they asked me, in fact, why are you launching a, a car in this segment? Because it's the SUV segment which is growing and, you know, this segment has not really grown and etc, etc, which I feel is a, okay, is a very genuine question. At the same time, when we look at the numbers or when we look at the percentage, you know, uh, this less than four meter sedan segment also constitutes about 11% of the total market. And we could clearly see that last year, in fact, I think 340 or 1000 vehicles were sold in that market. Now Hyundai having a market share of close to 17 and a half percent, very clearly there existed a market to sell very easily four to 5000 vehicles. Yeah. So why not have a, a, a model in that segment? Number two, diesel BS6, again, the issue of, because uh, this segment customers, I think 40% of them had uh, uh, wanted a diesel. So yeah. uh, we are clearly seeing, seeing attraction with Aura, uh, that aspect as well. The turbo was launched, the CNG was launched. Uh, and also, I think we, 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 pro we are very proud to say that we have raised the level up. Uh, you can clearly see that, uh, uh, you know, the, the features like the wireless charger. I mean, everybody is using a mobile phone. And I think uh, sometimes we take things for granted. But uh, customers have really loved that uh, a very simple feature in a model like Aura. So my point is, it, we are very excited to really raise the bar and uh, really give something extra to the customers. And uh, uh, so the response has been very, very good. And going forward, I believe uh, now that the diesel BS6 fuel is there across the country, I think the response is only going to get better. Yeah, I agree with you. And in fact, uh, the point you made is the one I was going to ask you about, you know, the fact that you have a diesel. I mean, you know, now the, the desire is, does not. And so in that whole space, it's not just about the desire, but the fact that Maruti has vacated diesel uh, surely becomes this massive opportunity. And not just because of, you know, the obvious, oh, they don't have it and we do, but more so because there's a legion of people out there who still want a good diesel. They trust Hyundai because, of course, you have, you know, you're really well entrenched in the market. Um, so more so than other car makers, do you think Hyundai has this amazingly juicy opportunity with diesel? Yeah, yeah, I firmly believe it because, you know, if you see last year, frankly speaking, there was so much of confusion about this BS4 petrol, BS6 diesel, whether it will happen, at what price it will happen. And industry estimates varied from 50,000 to 100,000 rupees for a BS6 diesel. And we are very proud that, frankly, that to have a diesel BS6 at a 20,000 delta, I think the uh, uh, actually uh, 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 the game has been reset. And I firmly believe that there's a great opportunity out there. And, and the best part about Hyundai is that the entire range uh, is there, you know, whether it is the small car, I mean, starting from the Neos to the Aura, then to the Venue and the Creta, and then the Tucson. I think the entire range, and there's a whole, whole lot of customers who are like diesel fans. They just want a diesel. And I believe we have a, we have a diesel engine, which is, uh, which is very, very effective, which is very efficient which is high performance and which is from Hyundai. So uh, why not? I think there's a great opportunity out there and we would be very happy to really take the piece of the cake, a larger piece of the cake. No, I agree with that logic completely. And in fact, uh, I remember when that announcement first happened, the first thought I had, and I was talking with the guys in the office as well, was, uh, you know, great for Hyundai. It's, it's really good for you because you did announce fairly soon enough that you will stay with diesel. And so I think that uh, was very heartening for a large number of us, certainly for the customers too. Um, okay, so product-wise, there was another question from Samir, uh, and this is again one that I know gets asked very often, so bear with me. But maybe right now is not the right time, because of course things have just gone on their head in this crisis. But otherwise, if you just take a step back, look at how the situation of the market has been evolving pre-corona, and then maybe even post-corona. Uh, Genesis, what's the, uh, what's the sense uh, of uh, getting that brand to India? <laughs> All these questions are all about the future. So I can say that I feel like a millennial when a millennial, uh, not a millennial, I feel like a millennial millionaire <laughs> because I feel that I have so many years to go and uh, and and I am uh, because so many customers have so have such high expectations from, from Hyundai that from so many new products uh, to new brands and they are expecting Hyundai to, to bring into India. Yes, there is a great opportunity out there as well. But everything has a time and 
the, uh, same thing, I think the Genesis brand has again given a lot to Hyundai and yeah. doing very well. Uh, uh, and pro uh, again, raising the bar. And again, when I visited the Genesis showroom uh, again in Seoul, I mean, forget the car, forget the brand. I think the kind of experience, the customer experience you get is so amazing. And uh, th this is one of my, I mean, you said uh, in, at the beginning that veteran and 25 years and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I think those two hours spent in the Genesis showroom was a huge, huge learning experience for me that how a customer would feel coming to a place which where all his desires and all are, are kind of coming to the fore. You know, I think I think amazing. And I just wish that a time comes when when we are in the position to maybe give the Indian customers also uh, a taste of the Genesis brand. I must tell you that we're looking at that picture of you standing in that uh, Genesis showroom <laughs> with the new updated, yeah. uh, you know, G90, G90 uh, which has yes. uh, got that really awesome grill in the front. Um, and, you know, there's so much that's been talked about uh, Genesis. And you're right. I think it's a matter of timing, I know, but I'm sure you understand the potential. Let's stick to this topic and just talk a little bit about your visit to Korea in general. Uh, you know, your, call it induction, call it whatever, but even, even the experience of being there from a cultural perspective. Uh, talk us through what that was like for you. Ah, that is interesting. Uh, frankly, I was amazed. You know, I've traveled across, I mean, like so many of us, but to see all this was my first time. And uh, what amazed me was that how strong uh, Hyundai is in, in, in Seoul. I mean, every, every second building appeared to be something to do with uh, Hyundai. So it was a great moment of uh, pride for me. I went to the, to the brand center. I mean, the kind of uh, experience I had there uh, in terms of, uh, you know, little things like how a car is made to the robots in the showroom, really assisting the customers, uh, the, the, the rally. Uh, the, the you know the simulator uh, for the for the rally driving uh, the, you know the whole experience was really overwhelming uh, of course when I went to the uh, uh, the office I mean the thoroughness uh, the, the the humility of of the management uh, uh, again something to really uh, learn from uh, I also went to the new uh, the new office uh, which is being constructed which again is going to be something of a landmark I believe uh, right at the in the heart of Seoul. Uh, so all in all, it was a feeling of uh, a great pride uh, that yes, the company is so strong, and 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 the best part is the company is very futuristic. I think uh, sometimes uh, you know we you hear so many contrasting views about okay uh, whether to invest in technology, uh, what's going to happen. But when I see when I went there, whether it was EV whether it was the fuel cell, hydrogen fuel cell, I think the kind of technologies I was really, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 I, I saw were amazing. Then, of course, the, the technological center, uh, uh, amazing center, and, of course, all these new models launched there. I saw the crash testing being done. Uh, I think the whole experience of uh, what a modern, forward-looking OEM, which a global player looks like, I think this was really a very, very uh, personally a... Uh, very overwhelming experience for me. Now I can imagine that and you know uh, as you were talking about some of those things I was trying to remember uh, our, our trips of course in the past as well where we've seen some of this and you're right and in fact the one that I, I made last summer um, is when we actually got in touch with much more of what's happening. I mean I remember in November of 2018 is when I drove the Nexo for the first time uh, in the US and then I had so many questions about that. And then we got to see some of that last year in, in Korea, at the R&D headquarter in Namyang. So, you know, I think all of this kind of stitches together in a beautiful way because it's also showing the sort of evolution of the product that's been happening, you know, with Hyundai for some time now globally. And, um, you know, that I think is very heartening. Yes, yes, of course. I think, uh, like I said, it's all about the, your confidence in the future and your willingness to take some risks and your willingness to really invest. I think this is what uh, uh, I think uh, Hyundai as a company has been able to do and we can clearly see the results happening. I think the way things are moving both on the market share front, revenues front, I think we have, we have, to, we have every reason to be very optimistic about the future. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you on that. And uh, you know, uh, the, the point you made about willingness to invest, I think uh, in an Indian context as well, we've seen that, right? I mean, there's, there's been tremendous, especially when you launched even the Kona Electric. Uh, you know, you first invested in doing the whole assembly line at, at Chennai, then brought the product in. It wasn't just imported, it was assembled here. Um, that took a lot of people by surprise. Yes, I think... Uh, Including again, your competition. Yeah, 
No, no, I don't like uh, to get into comparisons. But what I can say is, when the Kona was launched, EVs, frankly speaking, were just being talked about. And I think just see the the kind of benchmark Hyundai was able to uh, to take the EVs to the next level. I think this is what uh, I am mentioning that. Uh, it, Everything is not related to volume and it is just about, yes, who is going to take the lead, who is going to take the technological leadership and willing to put that first foot forward, which is always remembered and which sets the pace for others to follow. Oh, yeah, absolutely right. And, uh, you know, that the car is a really credible one. I can endorse that too. And so, you know, it's fun to drive and we, we love that. Right. Lots of people are still going on asking about the i20. So, guys, I think maybe you've joined <laughs> in a little late. I promise you we've talked about the i20. So, all I will request is that you must, in fact, go back and watch the video from the start later because uh, we talked about it in great detail. We even had visuals of it. So you must, uh, in fact, uh, tell us what you think about the car. And, uh, you know, on this YouTube video later on, please comment uh, or go ahead and tweet me and, and tell us what you think because, yeah, we talked about it in great detail. So I'm not going to go back there. But just so you know, uh, Tarun, there are a lot of people who are still going on asking about the i20. Uh, it just shows, I think, what kind of excitement there is around that brand. But... The other car that surprisingly a lot of people are talking about, and I saw Froilan uh, asking about this as well just now, Sonata. Now, I know the brand has exited India some time ago, but you've never closed the door on it. You've never said that, you know, you won't bring it back. And I get it. Sedans in general are kind of cold here. That segment in particular is cold. But the reason I ask this is because as a brand shaping car, I mean, if you look at what the new generation is doing in the US right now, it drives brilliantly compared to the last one. It looks completely different and it's got, you know, massively appreciated for its looks. Um, so you have to comment on that. <laughs> Look, uh, uh, I would not like to comment on Sonata, but I would like to comment on sedans, like you said. A uh, uh, lot of people give up on, uh, on, uh, uh, on segments, you know, very, very fast. And Hyundai is not one uh, company, Hyundai is not a company who's, who gives up on segments, I think. So uh, we are looking at every opportunity available. Uh, yes, Sonata again has been a cult. Uh, uh, probably, uh, you know, uh, uh, there are various various things which happen, you know. What I get to hear is that globally, somewhere in some at some places, in fact, people are now bored, some young people are bored of uh, SUVs and they say that, okay, SUV is my father's car and maybe I need a sedan or a hatch for myself. So you, d you never know. Customer preferences keep on changing. So like I said, as a full range OEM, we need to keep a tab on all the opportunities in the market. And uh, so we're looking at uh, all segments very carefully and and let, let me keep some things to myself. And I'm sure at the right time, we'll be in a position to, to, to come to the market with, uh, with this. Yeah. Have you had a chance to look at the car, though? I mean, you, do you like the way it looks? Uh, I have, yes. Yeah, because I guess it would have been already uh, on display at the no, headquarter. I'm, sorry, I'm there. not talking about the Sonata. I'm talking about, uh, you know, I'm not talking about the Sonata. I, 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 I clarified that I'm not talking about the Sonata. I'm talking about uh, so many new cars, you know, which we have in our arsenal and not really neglecting any segment. That's what I meant. Oh, no, no, that's fair. And I won't misquote yeah. you on that. But I'm yeah, genuinely, yeah. genuinely asking, have you seen the new Sonata? Yeah. Because... Uh, no, 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 I haven't. Okay. Okay. Well, right now, I mean, I know you can't see it right now, but uh, it's on our screens. And uh, yeah, it's just got such a lot of attention for its looks. Um, and of course, like I said, I can, having driven it, I can tell you that, you know, it's also great fun to drive. And so, yeah, we'd love to see that come back to India too. Uh, now, I know that I've gone on, you know, sort of almost, you know, battering you with all these product questions. Uh, so, again, a little bit of a step back. In all of this, you know, once things return to normalcy, uh, there has been some talk over the last, well, what, a, more than a year, actually, about capacity. Because, you know, uh, an interesting anecdote, if I may, is that uh, in the way, the way I'm interpreting it, uh, if you look at monthly sales, uh, technically, you have become the, the largest car maker in India in April. Because, uh, you know, you had just exports. Nobody has sold a single car here. Everybody had zero sales locally. And your exports are the highest. So your monthly <laughs> sales tally is now the highest. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we don't want to be a one-month uh, king. We, we are looking for a much more sustainable leadership in India. <laughs> no, no, fair enough. And you know I'm joking. But the, the, yeah. the bigger point, capacity, uh, you know, we've seen it getting stretched. We've seen it getting enhanced. And, you know, there's been all sorts of things done to sort of just squeeze out that last bit. Uh, and then, of course, the market slowed down. So the urgency wasn't there. But as things start to pick up, what is the thinking or what's the planning 
on, on that? I mean, do you have more space within the Chennai premises to be able to expand or would you just have to look at a new place? Look, frankly speaking, I would say that Hyundai has been a very smart company because uh, uh, I think the way capacity has been managed uh, over these years. Uh, as you know, costs are very important and capacity utilization becomes a very, very critical part of the whole thing in terms of managing costs and bringing in efficiencies. And I think at Hyundai, if you see uh, the most consistent capacity utilization has happened over the past so many years now. Uh, last year, of course, you saw the market really going down. Yeah. This year again, now, uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, uh, so we have always said that we keep a close watch. All the options are available to us, whether really going for some kind of, a, a, you know, a capacity enhancement, uh, 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 you know, in, uh, in Chennai or looking at other uh, options. So all those options are available with us. At the same time, very clearly, for the next two, three years, we don't see any kind of a problem in terms of capacity. I think we have sufficient capacity to take care of Indian customers as well as our export commitments for the next two, three years. Going forward, we have we are keeping a close watch and we are our company is very, very open, uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, expanding when the need arises. All right. Uh, that's that's the point taken then. And it's good to know in a sense that, you know, it's not a dire need anytime soon. Um, and when it comes to uh, your experience with the production part or the assembling part of the Kona Electric, uh, how's that been? Because obviously it sets you up for future as well. Yes, uh, I think our engineers have done a very good job uh, because, uh, you know, to really do uh, this kind of a thing. And uh, I can only say from a marketer's angle, the customer feedback on the quality uh, has been amazing. And uh, I think we have... Uh, about close to 375 customers now on board and I, including me, uh, I, I myself have been driving a Kona. Uh, I think a, a great learning experience for all of us at production as well. And we have already announced that we believe very strongly in EVs. So a lot of people are keep on asking us now that fuel prices have, oil prices have uh, gone down. So what happens to EV? But at Hyundai, I think uh, we, we know the direction is right. And going forward, uh, uh, we are already investing into EVs. We have already promised that in the next two to three years, we'll be bringing an EV for the mass market uh, yeah. as well. In, yeah. But what, what about, what about uh, hybrids? Because there seems to be some sort of a, you know, a little bit of a momentum again building up towards making a case for hybrids. Uh, if that is the case for the market, then what is Hyundai's take on that? Look, I, like I already said, I think there are uh, various clean uh, uh, fuel technologies available, starting right, right from BS6 to CNG to hybrids to EVs to fuel cells. I think, uh, again, the advantage of being Hyundai is that we have access to all these technologies and we're just watching very closely what happens to the, to the regulations, what happens to the taxation. I think as and when what suits to the Indian market, we'll be very happy to, to bring in. Okay. And, uh, you know, of course, I know that some of that is work in progress in terms of how the market continues to develop. And, uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see uh, where exactly it ends up because uh, nobody really knows the answer right now in any case. A uh, lot more questions that have been coming in. So I'm just trying to catch up on those. And, uh, you know, there's uh, people who are continuing to say hello to you, some of them who have met you in the past. So just thought I should pass hello. on the <laughs> hello. And, uh, <laughs> The, uh, you know, there's an interesting question that is from Sneha uh, as well. And she's asking about uh, a possible rival in the small car or entry car space against something like a Quaid or an Espresso. Okay. Um, uh, look, uh, I think we are fairly well covered in the entry level. If you see, in fact, uh, um, of course, we had the Centro. We the brought Centro, back the yeah. Centro. Then last year, we, we launched the Neos. And uh, uh, and let me tell you, this is something which has really, really evolved, uh, 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 you know, and uh, the kind of traction uh, we have started receiving for the NEOS, especially in the last three months, has been amazing. I think, again, a trendsetter in terms of the features we were able to introduce. And now that, again, the opportunity in diesel. So, and of course, we have the the grand item, uh, uh, the old war horse of Hyundai, again, uh, you know, so we are fairly well covered in the entry level space. Uh, we understand that this, this 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 segment has really not grown over the past few years. At the same time, this is a, a quite a big segment in terms of volume. So the importance is very much there. Then so many first timers buy this. 
so it's a very important uh, uh, you know it's a very handy tool in uh, to really get uh, get these first timers on board and give them a great hyundai experience so that they can really then move on to the next segment so yeah. uh, so we will look at all opportunities and we understand that uh, the suv uh, styling mm-hmm. in the um, in the entry level is something which probably some of the oems have tried in india uh, the response has been mixed uh, uh, you know i would say that uh, with all humility and uh, we have to st- we have to still study it more to make a decision on that yeah because i mean there's still more products coming there as well i mean tata has already announced the hbx there and so we we'll have to wait and see but um, you know the other uh, segment where you saw a tremendous amount of success when you were at maruti and that is the itiga when it first came in you know people said oh you know it's just another car it's trying to be a me too innova but it created its own space it really became it almost separated itself into a separate segment from the innova uh, given the success and the kind of volume that that car gets and again others have tried to get in there but haven't do you still see an opportunity in mpb uh, yes i think uh, a compact uh, mpb MPV, let's say yeah mpv as a segment i think frankly speaking not only atiga even last year i believe reno also uh, the kind of success they have got uh, and kind of redefined the mpv segment altogether yeah. so it was very interesting and it was very surprising to to many of us uh, so yes there are opportunities available Uh, in india and uh, we are looking at all of, all available opportunities and i believe that at, at the time comes then yes in the npv space as well uh, 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 across the spectrum at different price ranges there are opportunities available so let us see uh, uh, when do we bite the bullet <laughs> okay i'm glad you said when and not if so you know i'm going to take my own reading from that now tarun <laughs> okay you're a smart guy okay now cng uh, there's a question from sanju venue and cng is that going to happen look uh, you can anything can happen it's not about happening the whole idea is also you know when we look at a product how many variants we want you know we have a petrol we have a turbo we have a diesel yeah. because it is also about you know you give too many options to the customer then the stock management at dealerships then there are customer complaints so as it is i feel that we have too many variants i'll be very honest about it i think sometimes yes we want to really have give the customer what he wants and uh, uh, so we have too many variants and then it becomes a a, a nightmarish uh, in terms of inventory management yeah. so uh, so we have to keep on seeing that yes if there is an opportunity then let's have it at the same time we should be ready to let go of some so uh, as far as venue is concerned in the suv space frankly speaking i feel that cng still probably with all humility i would say that not really going to get us so many volumes because that mm-hmm. customer is looking for more power and the kind of uh, target segment the kind of lifestyle he has probably cng would not have too many takers okay and when we spoke about mpv actually you know it's my bad i should have immediately jumped on to this vishnu had a question about the seven seater creta which is supposedly coming later and i know that the new creta hasn't even got off the ground so i'm not going to ask you when but do you yeah. think a product like that helps you in a way to sort of cover that segment of course why not i think so uh, uh, i think we can, we are already seeing success by so many of the uh, of other other players in in different segments frankly speaking and let me tell you frankly last 12 15 months has been a re- evolution of short source in terms of new players with new products with new concepts really making a mark i think they, this should give a heart to so many other oems about really taking the plunge and uh, because the indian customer and that also shows that uh, uh, indian customers are really willing to experiment they are willing to give an opportunity to a new idea to a new category and as long as you can really raise the bar in terms of features in terms of technology i think india is a big country is a country of opportunities and uh, and uh, you can really go ahead and take it okay and i would be remiss uh, tarun if i didn't ask you about also the update on the verna that's just happened Uh, it is the yeah. mid-cycle facelift, and of course, it was expected. Again, the timing is not great because it's happened, you know, during this time and everything is shut down. But um, that segment, while it may not be sort of, you know, fireworks anymore like it used to be with the previous generation, it's still a yeah. large number. And you know, the Verna again, uh, call it coincidence that I'm talking to you, and you know, it's all it's been our segment leader. It's been the car that's always, you know, won all the shootouts that we've done in that space, despite having a strong CS, despite having the strong, um, you know, uh, city, and then of course. you have the uh, yaris from toyota but uh, the city the new generation of course i know it's got delayed that should be coming to the market right now do you think that you know with that your updated car 
uh, this compact sedan space could once again get a little bit of fire going. Yeah, uh, I think as as OEM, it is our responsibility to see that this is such a critical part of the Indian auto this segment, and somewhere because of the SUVs and because of that craze last three four years, we saw some kind of a traction shifting from this segment. But I firmly believe uh, that uh, the premium sedan segment, uh, I think there is a lot of uh, uh, there are a lot of customers who would want to be in that seg- uh, uh, to be in that kind of a car, and uh, with the Varna again. with the blue link whether it is a connectivity or the diesel which has been a forte of varna and now in the bs6 space again that opportunity exists and the and frankly although this is not a full model change but the kind of changes we have been able to bring both to the exterior interior as well as to the engine i think uh, the car will be really really fun to drive i know you haven't yet driven the creta so i cannot talk about the varna not fair on my part but believe you me you are going to really love love the varna I, you are yeah, really going to I, I can't wait to drive all these cars. I can tell you, I just yes. can't wait to drive now. Right? <laughs> you know, that's that's the that's the bottom line. But yeah, of course, these cars. You know, there's a lot of anticipation because anything new comes to the market, and you're right. Even though this may be just a facelift, uh, it's the new engine that 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 has me most interested. Yes, the new grill looks nice, and again, we were looking at the video of that while we were talking. Um, but you know, the, the 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 biggest point here is that. we tend to sometimes even all of us you know we we get so carried away with the new concepts especially suv everything suv just fires up but we tend to forget that there's still substantial volume coming from these cars and uh, there's a huge number of fans of a car like the verna still so yeah it'll be interesting to see what happens with that as well a uh, couple of people have asked this question and i know it's an unfair one but it's the one that always gets asked uh, so i have to pass it on to you sorrow has asked this question and uh, let me see i'm going to scroll up and try and see who else um, i think it was shreyas who also asked basically about the sense of competition that you perceive from kia uh, you know there's a lot of confusion people still have i think there are people who still don't know that there is a relationship between the two uh, and yet there are those who don't understand that they are intensely competitive brands in every market so how do you view it this competition firstly uh, and do you think of them as um, you know a, a cousin a rival well, how do you, how do you see them <laughs> <laughs> no no that's interesting and let me tell you and this is not for the heck of saying i firmly believe as a marketer that the competition always brings the best out of you and uh, 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 and i think i we always welcome competition because it sets higher and higher benchmarks it it it, it motivates you to do even better and i think this is what kia has been able to do to all of us and uh, yes uh, yeah uh, i uh, i'm not really going into the ownership and all for me as the head of marketing and sales at hyundai kia is a fierce competitor uh, even more so because they are korean and i understand the customer confusion that makes the job all the more harder for me yeah which means i need to have a very much more differentiating experience because maybe with some i can say okay this is korean this is blah 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 but here i need to really differentiate i need to really uh, you know uh, bring all the might of the hyundai service sales and service network the, the cult brand which hyundai has had the so many uh, you know customers who have been loyal to hyundai the 23 years head start they have had on the on the kia so i think all the experience comes here and uh, uh, it's a worthy competitor we have to respect and uh, propels us to do even better i mean i i leave it at that no that's great and actually i i totally respect that answer because in a sense that's what benefits the market it benefits the consumer as well right you guys push each other it's good for everybody so uh, and of course good for you as well so uh, you know uh, yeah a lot of people are reacting to what you've said and i think uh, you know i'm sure everybody likes your answer because that is how it should be um there there's a question that went up i think it was from king shook asking about what's your next launch because you know the creta has already launched the aura has already launched the verna has already launched uh, <laughs> so what what is the next launch i think that's that's the question I think this question I should be asking everybody. I'm sure everybody will answer it much better than they'll me. all say Palisade, by the way. So don't <laughs> ask everybody. <laughs> so I think we have we talked too much about launches and four plus three seven plus one eight eight launches and uh, this uh, and the uh, revelations in the last sixteen months. Uh, uh give us a break. Uh, not that give us a break in terms of launching of products. Give us a break in 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 really informing you when the next launch is going to be. I can only say it's going to be as exciting as our other launches and uh, I'm thankful to all the Hyundai fans all the uh, over there who are really looking at Hyundai with a lot of expectation. I can only tell you the team at Hyundai is working day day and night to really meet those high expectations. Please continue to demand more from us because that will really Uh, you know uh, uh, push us 
to even 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 drive harder so uh, uh, friends i uh, uh, this is very important and i can only say uh, uh, um, uh, the new products from hyundai are really going to reflect the new age indian customer and take the level up as far as indian auto is concerned I love that line. What you just said. Please continue to demand more from us. I've just typed it out and put it up on the screen. Um, you know, honestly, I think that's that's the that's the great attitude to have as a, as a brand for anybody because um, you know it keeps you honest. It it keeps your customer happy. And uh, you know, there's uh, in fact, guys, please react to it. There's lots of people asking about the i30 and the i40. That happens all the time. Uh, and I know that there's no point asking you those questions. But uh, but you know, my my assumption, of course, is that the next big thing is going to be the i20. Whenever that happens now, because of the delays, etc. But um, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to that happening because I feel like for the market, it becomes a very significant, significant, uh, almost like a like an occasion when that when that happens. Yeah, of course. I think uh, uh, again, this is a matter of pride. There's so many customers waiting for a cult brand to be to be launched again, and uh, so this is what uh, happens. And let me tell you, you made a statement about delays and all uh, at Hyundai. I think we have. very very good systems in place and there are no delays i am not going into when but there are no delays let me let me put it on record okay that's that's good to know no delays on record uh, uh, with that actually there's a question again sorry guys i may have missed your name some of you but uh, there was a talk about manufacturing i think it was vishwas who asked uh, manufacturing going to start uh, do you have uh, plans to open up uh, manufacturing at the plant next week Yes, of course. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, subject to all the approvals in place, and we are we are all ready. In fact, today morning we were in a meeting, and we are all ready to start operations, production, supply chain, dealerships, workshops. Uh, so, as far as Hyundai is concerned, we are ready. Our dealers are ready. I hope our customers are ready as well. And uh, uh, so, we are really looking forward to to better times. Yeah, I think all of us are. In fact, and uh, you know, there was. Um, so many people who have been asking these kind of questions about uh, you know the fact that are you going to I, i'm just trying to sort of go through it and see who else had asked that question about the chennai plant uh, reopening uh, so next week uh, you know the reason i asked that question is because in the in the context of manufacturing the government has actually allowed a lot of manufacturers to reopen but uh, you know depending on what zone etc everybody falls in some of the the vendor base is still not going to be 100% ready so what is your current uh, sort of situation at the plant in terms of stocks so that you can at least begin some some amount of manufacturing even if some of the vendors are still shut yeah so uh, uh, the situation is uh, good and our first thing is our corporate affairs is in touch with the uh, you yeah. know the the uh, the government authorities i think yesterday also the heavy ministry uh, uh, heavy industry ministry had a meeting i think with all the oems and uh, i think it has been expressed that we need the entire supply chain to really work for the production to start happening so we are very confident at hyundai that uh, things will things will work out and we should be able to start you asked about the stocks yes uh, the stocks are definitely available for uh, for few days of production at the same time i we firmly believe that the entire chain has to work because you can't have a start stop kind of a thing you know so you need the the, the entire value chain uh, starting from the supplier to the production to the to the dealers as well because unless the dealers open i mean yeah. what do i do i mean i, I <laughs> so i think yeah. that is that is very very important you know uh, we've been talking by the way for almost an hour now and i just realized that all the other things that i was going to ask you about i have just completely forgotten about we just got carried away with product and and operations so very quickly then you know the time that you that you've been spending at home i know that of course it's working days for all of us and we're all working from home uh, but uh, you know you're saving the little commute time etc you're being able to spend a little more time with the family Is, has this been good quality time for you uh yes look uh Uh, 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 let me tell you, work from home. I never knew was so tough. So yes, <laughs> number of hours have gotten have really increased. Uh, uh, the unfortunate part is result is every day not not so encouraging in terms of still we have the lockdown and you cannot and we marketing people uh, you know uh, we are driven by the adrenaline of sales so that is not happening. But at the same time, a great learning experience for 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 all of us regarding family. Yes, I am excited because after five years I have had the opportunity. My sons have. come back from um, uh, you know after completing their first year of post graduation so uh, spending a lot of time with them uh, has been very exciting you know as marketers we always talk about millennials you know uh, okay what do we do for millennials and getting to know these millennials uh, at a, at a such a quarter at a close quarter i think has been a great uh, opportunity for me last four weeks 
and how they have changed and how their behavior changed and frankly this last one month means for the first time probably they know what constraints are and uh, you know what is it to live in these kind of restrictions because as parents we always felt that we could not control them um, but here the environment and uh, this thing i uh, i think this is a great learning experience for them and i have really spent some very exciting times with them especially uh, kind of playing uh, poker with them and in the even late evenings and uh, discussing so many things and uh, and and hearing their some crazy ideas sometimes for people like us which are too crazy to digest but then it is really exciting stuff you know i've been i've been sort of trying to quickly flip through some of the pictures uh, that that you shared uh, very kindly with us and i can see the the whole family sitting in, at, at the dining table playing poker <laughs> uh, you know it's good to have that quality time but your your boys by the way i mean they are they are almost sort of national treasures because i don't think anybody <laughs> has their kind of repertoire already at such a young age they have this most illustrious cv please tell us about them uh, no uh, i mean uh, uh, god has been very kind and uh, their twins they are identical twins and uh, they pass out of iit delhi and uh, so now they are studying at i am ahmedabad and uh, so um, they they just completed their first year their internships they are going to begin now so uh, uh, so i think they, yes they are very nice uh, nice kids and god has been very kind to us i think uh, so i just hope that they are able to really contribute uh, 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 to the to the country and in whatever way whatever career they choose and uh, yes i am very very fortunate to have uh, have sons like that and family like that my wife has really worked very hard it's it's a tough job to bring up the twins because <laughs> they are so competitive yeah. they are very very competitive and for us it's always a nightmare that uh, if one gets and the other doesn't get Uh, what will happen uh, so i think god has been very kind that both have had the same colleges uh, same graduation or same post graduation uh, uh, now different internships so uh, which is which is which is good for us yeah. so at least they will choose some different careers and maybe compete less <laughs> you know i still remember how tense you were when that uh, i am result hadn't yet come and you were like what if one gets in the other doesn't what am i going to do <laughs> yeah it was that has always been a big challenge and uh, i mean and and it has been amazing that how to get how their fate is like interlinked to each other uh, amazing yes I, i'm sure they're around so you please say hi to them from us in fact i would yes. i would ask you to call them but i'm sure they're busy doing something uh, you know you must say hello to them because uh, the, the reason i brought them up is because of this unique uh, sort of combination the fact that they're twins uh, you know identical twins they both went to iit now they're both at iim so uh, you know good good for them and all the very best to them in any case in whatever they decide to do i'm pretty sure whatever they do is going to be fantastic so you know uh, they proved that capability already um, and it's great to know that you are getting some time at at home but have you been doing any of the the, the household stuff as well are you doing any of the cooking or the cleaning <laughs> <laughs> no no household stuff for me i know i would have loved to say that i've learned this learned to cook this dish and my wife would have cut my throat if i said this because i still cannot put a light i mean i cannot cannot light the gas still and i'm very very poor at that uh, so uh, uh, for me uh, i have been a, a, you know a, a workaholic and an avid reader but last one month i thought that i'll just keep those books aside and try to spend as much time with the family by the way they are here and you oh. can say hi my sons are here let's, so let's i'll just call them in if we can be, Maybe yes. Hi guys, introduce uh, yourselves, please. Hi, hello sir. Now you have to say who is who, so please hello, tell us. Uh, I am Anubhav. Uh, I am Abhishek. Hi, and you both wearing the same T-shirt also. I mean, that's just <laughs> yeah. college T-shirt, by the way. Beach oh, that is your college T-shirt. So yeah. it's a, it's a good thing that you guys made it home though before the lockdown started, right? <laughs> so yeah, but, uh, it's being. it's been an opportunity for us as well because we have been in ahmedabad for the last one year so we also get to spend more time with our dad and our mom and so yeah it's been great so you're happy to be back under the 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 roof yeah, yeah. very happy oh, that's good and and you know i know you both are can just tell us quickly what are your two internships that you have because he said they are different yeah. um, i am have an internship with pcg we started two weeks back so i'm currently working with them From and home. it's been a Yeah, yeah, working from home, so it's been a very different experience altogether. We had our induction online, which is probably, I guess, I mean, it was a fresh experience for me to just, you know, have an induction online to work to coordinate with people online. So yeah, that's something new. 
Yeah, my internship starts on Monday and it's with Google. Ah, okay, and it's again work from home, right? Obviously, so yeah, that's got to be different. And I know that you would have been anticipating actually the environment of going into their offices, etc. But you know, all in good time, I suppose. I'm sure that'll happen. I'm sure your parents are very happy that you're home. So enjoy the the time, and thank you guys. All the best. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks, Arun, for calling them in. That was very sporting of you. Uh, and you know, now I can see that they're not identical. I think in the pictures they always looked, yeah. But now they, I can totally see how yeah. because you had said that. But all the photos are always seen. Yeah, sorry. Technically, they were identical. This is what the doctor told us. Frankly, we don't know, but uh, but we can clearly see a lot of differences which yeah. have come up over the over the years. Yeah. Yeah, I think there are very few who end up, you know, growing up still being identical. I think as kids, a lot of them because I had friends who were twins and you know two sets. And today, I mean, I just wonder why we even thought they were twins. You know, they look so different to me. <laughs> So I think uh, when you know them well, yeah, it's different. But uh, no, it is great that you've got to spend some time with them. Uh, honestly, good luck to them because I know it's it's difficult to you know almost start your career in a sense when you're starting as an intern somewhere, and then not having that experience of going to the office has got to be a little tough. So, you know, actually, it is very very, and I can see the psychology changing. And it's disappointing. Especially, yeah. you know, you want to work in a corporate environment, you want to meet so many people, and you are like you're oh, yearning to go. But anyway. This is a this is also a good learning experience. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people are uh, reacting, of course, to the boys as well now. So it was it was great to see them. I have to say, and uh, you know, great spending time with you today as well. I think it's very kind of you to uh, to take out. Uh, you said you're a workaholic, so you know, to give us one hour, a little more than an hour. I am very pleased. Thank you. No, thank you so much. It was a great experience, and today is also first May, by the way. So it's a holiday actually, and so I'm sure you're working. I am sure you have been doing something. Yeah, yeah, I told you this morning I have been on in fact uh, you know we had a meeting with the factory and yeah. because we are also uh, really yearning to go now like I said. So yeah. so yeah but it was great spending time with you Siddharth as always and thank you to all the viewers out there who have been so kind asking questions and like I said uh, as at Hyundai uh, customer satisfaction is the number one forte for us number one objective so please keep on pushing us and i promise you that we will need no stone unturned to really really bring exciting products to you and give you a great experience and we are all ready for you all of you guys uh, we are waiting for the lockdown to open and all our dealers uh, fully sanitized and with the new products and the uh, other successful products are waiting for you in their showrooms and at their workshops to receive all of you now of course the one thing we never talked about but i know that has been documented well is your uh, online buying uh, portal as well which has been very successful and in fact even in the editorial you wrote for us you you've talked about that um, very quickly before i let you go yeah. um, yeah. i know it's it's just been a few weeks or a few months since it launched uh, what is the kind of impressions you're getting on how that is building up because going forward having this digital buying um, outlet is going to become more and more important and you know the fact that you're also covering the whole um, the test drive can happen at your doorstep the delivery can happen at your doorstep uh, so how do you see that growing and what has been the initial feedback so uh, that's very uh, interesting actually frankly speaking as far as uh, auto is concerned last 3 4 years we have been talking about so much about digital but it has been limited to pre sales exploration or at best a booking but i think this click to buy initiative of hyundai is the first time that somebody has is trying a full end to end kind of a, a customer purchase decision so uh, we we had a pilot in delhi in january and now we have launched it all india uh, of course considering the lockdown but uh, let me tell you that traction we are receiving from the customers is amazing in fact the number of visitors on the ctb web website now have crossed the number of visitors on the hyundai corporate website so i think uh, a great traction from all of us all of them and we, i i firmly believe that going forward i think there, this is really going to be a very big game changer uh, because it takes care of everything you know customer can choose a car he can personalize it he can he can get it financed he can choose his mode of delivery and also he has the option of choosing a sales consultant on the way to help him so i think all that full 360 degree experience uh, at the click of a button is something which i believe customers and now especially in the post covid era are really going to appreciate so i have actually pulled up the website and we've cut full frame to that so that people know what you're talking about uh, and uh, you know i know you said it's early days but the fact that you in the mass space have been able to take a lead on this uh, do you think that uh, you know it could be a game changer in many ways for you because you'll have that first mover advantage yes definitely i i i very strongly feel it and i like i said 
first mover always has that kind of uh, nobody can take that status from us you know and uh, number two the kind of traction uh, uh, like i said we have been receiving and the other part is the experience at the website which keeps on getting better and better the kind of feedbacks now customers have started giving us okay they would want this so i think uh, again it really pushes us to do better and i firmly believe that it's not only about the click to buy of course that will be a great thing but this also helps us to really bring in efficiencies in so many other dealership operations you know which we never thought could be done digitally so i think this will be a uh, uh, kind of a new trend which is going to emerge and really help bring in lot of efficiencies in the entire value chain now i can't wait to in fact hear how it develops because uh, we'll be watching it very closely uh, and very keenly because you know obviously we are also extremely digital in what we do and uh, this kind of thing is great for the whole ecosystem in many ways so your learnings will be learnings for us too um, so I, i i do hope it takes off now i i know i simply must let you go so thank you so much uh, it's been an absolute pleasure it's uh, always nice to talk to you and i know that this is a different kind of a conversation virtually but uh, i have to tell you i still enjoyed it tremendously thank you same here siddharth and uh, and i look forward to really meeting you once this lockdown opens and it was really very good talking to you thank you very much thank likewise you much. no thank you and you have yourself a great evening a great weekend ahead please stay safe and uh, regards to the family as well from me thank you thank you great so that then folks was uh, mr tarun garg from hyundai motor india talking to us about you know a wide range of issues as i had promised to be would i mean we spoke about product we spoke about initiatives we spoke about production we spoke about lockdown and the lifting of that lockdown we just now spoke about click to buy which is hyundai's online sales initiative and then you know of course we uh, also covered uh, so much about what he's been doing at home and it was an absolute rare treat that we got to say hi to his uh, twin boys as well so that was a nice little opportunity for us and you know what in all of this new product conversation uh there was one car that i had also kind of lined up and kept ready to talk about but i realized that you know in all that product conversation it would have got lost so i'm just going to play out that video for you right now and i want you to react to it because most of you may know about it but some of you may not know about it and so uh let me just queue up that video and first play that for you because like i said i'd love to uh, get your reactions to this So that is the next generation of the Elantra from Hyundai. Now that is your mid-size sedan and uh, I know that we just had the facelift from the current one here in India just a short while ago. So it still got some time before this one comes in, but boy doesn't it look really hot. That's the absolute pinnacle of this new sensuous sportiness uh, design that we've seen because we saw it starting in some of the other cars. The Sonata of course has it too, the one we just saw some time ago on the US website. but uh, but yeah this can this one you got to react to it i'm going to play it again yeah just look at that i mean uh, it is absolutely sensational and uh, you've got to tell me what you think about it now the other thing of course that we also had to do was to uh, quickly go through our contest because i know i promised you fresh questions today so let me try and pull those up right now and In the meanwhile, you got to tell me what you think about uh, this car. It looks pretty nice, doesn't it? So please react to it. I'm starting to see some wows and greats and awesome. Uh, that's not the new Sonata, uh, Sneha. That is the Elantra. The new Elantra is what we are talking about right now. And uh, you know, it's got to be one of the most uh, talked about cars in the US right now too. Yeah, just as a reminder, it's the Elantra. The rear, especially, is very evocative, and uh, you've got a you know a, a headlamp that kind of merges into the grill. Literally, you you can't really tell them apart, and that's very different. Those lines are very distinct. Overall, the car just looks a lot more sporty and very very exciting. Uh, looks very nice. Yes, I agree. Uh, so yeah, I just thought I will show you that as a little glimpse of what might come uh, sometime in the late part of 2021. I reckon. I don't think it will come before that. It's a 21 model even in the US. and uh, that means that uh, we won't get it till next year for sure and don't forget everything is a little bit delayed now anyway 
And so here goes with the contest. I promised the contest question today. So I totally forgot about it while we were talking with Tarun because there's so much to talk about. But uh, okay, are you guys ready for the contest? I hope you are. And I will play out the contest video so you know what you have to do. First, let me ask you the first question. And remember, don't answer here. You've got to answer this on our website. And uh, that's the only way that you can actually stand to win the prizes. So that is the website, carandbike.com slash freewheeling. And the first question is, where is Hyundai's main global R&D center located? Where is Hyundai's main global R&D center located? Your three options are one, Asan, two, Namyang, three, Ulsan. So, Asan, Namyang, Ulsan. Answer bhi bhot asan hai. So, you have to just go ahead and give me the answer. And uh, that's where you have to go and uh, actually give that answer. No, you're not going to give it to me right now. And uh, here is how the contest works. Log on to karinbaikcom slash freewheeling and answer a simple question. Three lucky winners win a two-night, three-day stay at any domestic Club Mahindra Resort. Not just that, at the end of the month, all correct entries are eligible for the grand prize of an all-expense-paid three-night, four-day trip to Dubai or Singapore. So, keep freewheeling. Terms and conditions apply. Keep freewheeling and terms and conditions apply. Of course, they always do. But the good part is that all of this travel can only happen when it's safe to do so. So don't you worry, even if you win, you will get your hard-earned vacation. Uh, and especially for those of you who will win that monthly prize, Dubai or Singapore, always nice to go to. Question two for today. Here goes. Who designed the Hyundai venue? Who designed the Hyundai venue? Option one, Sangyuk Lee. Option two, Luke Donkerwalk. Option three, Yang or Jang J. Bong. I hope I'm getting that right. You will see all of this on our website. I promise you, uh, even if I'm pronouncing this all wrong, you'll still see it there. Karanbike.com slash freewheeling. Uh, who designed the Hyundai venue? Sangyuk Lee, Luke Donkerwalk, Jang J. Bong. Okay, so you've got to tell us about that. Uh, Pratik, you're asking, what about the Santa Fe? What about the Santa Fe? Uh, you know, we're, I, we, we are suggesting Hyundai should skip the Santa Fe, go straight to the Palisade, which is one segment higher, bring that to India as a nice little, you know, flagship. Uh, not little, of course, nice and big. Uh, lots of you are reacting to that uh, Elantra design winner. Design is really sporty, gorgeous, aviation feel. I agree, Chirag. Uh, and stunning, says Swapnil. Prem says it's hot going to grab more attention um, and of course uh, Elantra looks space age design says Sudesh looks nice says Chetan so yeah uh, you know Sudesh you're waiting for Kia Soul video thank you I'm I'm glad someone is excited about it because I am extremely excited about it and so you got to react to it when you see it okay uh, okay question three before I run out of time I've gone way over the one hour today what is the other name by which the Elantra sells in some markets. Thankfully, that video didn't have the other name. It said Elantra. Uh, what is the other name by which the Elantra sells in some other markets? Option one, Avant. Option two, Accent. Option three, Azera. Option one, Avant. Option two, Accent. Option three, Azera. Another name for the Elantra in other markets. Please go to carandbike.com slash freewheeling. Answer all three questions. Answer them correctly. Please put in your name and your city details and contact details. So we can get in touch with you if you win and we'll soon be announcing next week's uh, next week we'll soon be announcing last week's winner so we've had two winners already being announced remember and uh, they are already going to be getting their domestic vacation and then at the end of the month we'll have that international trip winner being announced too so uh, somebody says uh, verna somebody says new creta looks stunning so we should have palisade in india says swapnil i agree totally agree uh, and uh, okay Lots of you are starting to answer the questions here. But remember, answering here will only give other people the answers if you're right. And it will certainly, certainly not get you any prizes because that will only happen if you... Oh, let me do it this way. If you go here, karenbike.com slash freewheeling. Okay, one last thing left for me to do before I say goodbye because I simply must say goodbye now, I think. Let's get rid of that. Okay, is to tell you who I have on the show tomorrow. Yes, we will have an episode tomorrow. And it's a bit of a surprise. And you know what? I won't be here on uh, YouTube. I will be on Instagram talking with, come on, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, this person.
Okay, so Mohammed Kaif is my guest tomorrow. I'm certainly looking forward to it. Cricket always gets me excited, gets me smiling, and uh, you know it's always going to be fun to speak to someone of uh, who who has played for India. So you know I've got goosebumps about it already. Should be a funny fun conversation. Would love for all of you to join in because uh, of course we'll talk about more than just cars here. We're going to in fact probably talk more about cricket than anything else uh, because it is Kaif, and so please do join us for that. I hope you're excited about it like I am, and uh, yeah. I Think that's about it. I'm going to say goodbye and uh, thank you for updating us. Most welcome. I'm always happy to do that. And uh, I know that many of you have many other questions. Uh, you know, Vishnu, we spoke about the seven seater Creta. I know you've asked the same question many times. I promise you, uh, it will have a diesel engine. I mean, I don't need Tarun to tell us that. Uh, you heard what he said. They're going to focus on diesel in every segment. So, yeah, I, I don't think there's any doubt about a seven seater SUV uh, having or not having a diesel engine. Uh, there will be a market demand for it for sure. So should be a nice conversation. I certainly hope so. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please stay safe. Please do not step out. If you must step out, please wear your seatbelts. Please wear your helmets. If you're on a bike, please wear your masks. If you're on a bike or in a car. And with that, it is goodbye. I will play out that little promo for KF again. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Same time.